Charlie Munger is famous for saying the first $100,000 is a bitch. You'll hear that quote frequently on social media and blogs. But the part of the quote just after those words is what's really important. He says, but you gotta do it. In other words, if you want to become rich, you need to cross that $100,000 mark sooner than later. But you probably have no plan to do that. If your goal is to create wealth, then you have to watch this video. You can't create real wealth without first getting over the initial hump of $100,000. And most people have no concrete plan to get there. And without a plan, it ain't happening. In this video, I will give you that plan. You can do this. Several factors come into play when we're talking about saving money. For one thing, many of us don't have a good understanding of how compound interest works. The great Albert Einstein said the following, Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. So we're going to talk about compound interest first and some ways to use it to your advantage. I mean, if Einstein thinks it's important, shouldn't you? Compound interest is when you earn interest on your original investment as well as your earned interest itself. And it's one of the most powerful tools you have when saving money. And without a proper understanding of how compound interest works, we can easily get discouraged by the small amounts of interest our money earns. You should think of compound interest like a snowball getting bigger and bigger as it rolls downhill. So even if you start out with just a small amount of money, over time your investment can grow exponentially. This is literally how Warren Buffett got so rich. Buffett earned 99% of his wealth after he turned 50. Why? Because he invested early and stayed invested. Compound interest is one of the reasons why I recommend starting to save for retirement as early as possible. If you're in your 20s or 30s and watching this video, Please take this seriously. Even if you're not earning a big salary now, and because your salary is not substantial yet, you're not earning a huge amount of interest, just trust that it'll pay off in the long run. Every dollar you invest now counts. Listen to Einstein on this matter. Here is a good example of compound interest. Let's say you start investing a measly $100 a month in the stock market while you're in your early 20s. Then, let's say you average a positive return of 12% annually per year, compounded across 40 years. You can reasonably aspire to do this in a low-cost S&P 500 index fund that reinvests dividends. Now, let's imagine that your best friend, who is the same age, doesn't begin until 30 years later, when he or she is around 50 years old. Your friend invests $1,000 a month for 10 years averaging the same 12% return. When you hit your 40-year savings mark and your friend has saved for only 10 years, your friend will have generated about $230,000 in savings. But you will have earned a bit more than $1.17 million with only $100 per month invested. Even though your best friend was investing 10 times as much as you, the wonder of compound interest makes you five times richer. I know it can be hard to think about think it this way when you're young, but let me ask you this. Do you really believe that you won't get old? Of course not. You will be 50 years old someday. You will be 60 years old. It's going to happen. So take a moment and think about your future self. Would you rather your future self have millions of dollars or be broke? Well, then snap out of it and start saving now, even if it is $100 per month. So now that we know about compound interest, what is the right path to building a savings of $100,000? There is no one-size-fits-all to this question, as the path to building a savings of $100,000 will vary depending on several factors. Some things to consider include your income level, current expenses and spending habits, the interest rate you earn, and more. One thing is for sure, you must spend less than you earn. This is called having discipline. And I can promise you this, all the wealthy people you know and read about have discipline in their spending and savings habits. 
Be mindful about how you're spending your money and regularly contribute to a savings account or a retirement fund. So the first thing you must do is get your financial house in order. For example, how can you save money when you're in debt? That's a question many people ask themselves, and it's something that can be very frustrating. But to save any significant amount of money, you need to start with the basics. This involves paying off any debt you have, such as credit card debt, student loans, or auto loans. I have videos on my chavel, channel covering financial gurus Dave Ramsey and Ramit Sadi. I highly recommend watching those videos after you watch this video. Dave Ramsey and Ramit Sadi will give you a concrete framework to get out of debt. And once you're out of debt and have a monthly budget in place, it will be much easier to start saving and building up an emergency fund. Basically, an emergency fund is cash you set aside to cover expenses if something bad happens in your life, such as a job loss, injury, or health issue. Beyond that, you need to be mindful of your spending habits. This means tracking how much you're spending in each category of your budget and being aware of any unnecessary expenses you can eliminate or reduce. It also involves thinking about what you do with your money. Are there any expensive habits that you can cut back on, such as eating out frequently or purchasing luxury items? While it, may be, while it might be hard with some of your everyday spending habits, it's essential to consider the long-term benefits of saving money. Again, every wealthy person you read about who didn't inherit their money had a plan in place to get wealthy. It didn't just happen on its own. One important thing to remember is that almost every small change you make regarding saving and spending will impact your long-term financial goals. If you can set aside $20 each week by packing a lunch instead of eating out, that's an extra $1,040 a year that can go toward your savings or investment account. Again, I know it sounds small and insignificant, but look back at our talk on compound interest. Again, don't listen to me, listen to Einstein. In order to benefit from compound interest, the eighth wonder of the world, you need to save some money to actually take part in its benefits. Now, let's talk about the direct path to saving $100,000. Once you've gotten your finances in order and have a clear picture of how much money you're saving on a monthly or yearly basis, it's time to think about your long-term savings goals. Here is the blueprint for saving $100,000 in the next 10 years. Number one is to calculate how much you need to save each month. To start, calculate how much money you need to save up in order to reach your goal. For example, if you want to save $100,000 over a 10-year period and plan on investing the money in an investment account that compounds at a rate of 8% each year, you'll need to save approximately $870 per month. Double that if you want to do it in five years. Number two is to set up automatic transfers. Once you calculate how much money you need to save each month in order to reach your goal, set up automatic transfers from your checking account to your investing or savings account. This will ensure that you don't accidentally spend the money rather than putting it towards your goal. Number three is to increase your contributions when possible. If you receive a raise or financial windfall, don't forget to increase the amount that you're contributing to your savings or investment account. This will help you reach your goal more quickly and could also allow you to invest a larger portion of your income instead of spending it. Number four is to consider tax advantage accounts, such as a Roth IRA or 401k. Another thing to consider when saving for your goal is the tax advantages you could receive by contributing to a retirement account, such as a Roth IRA or 401k. This can be a great way to minimize the amount of taxes you pay and increase your savings without having to devote additional money to your budget. Number five is to, again, take advantage of compound interest. The great thing about compound interest is you make money just by letting it, letting it do its thing. What's better than earning money while you sleep? In fact, Warren Buffett said the following, If you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Investment accounts that compound will increase in value over time, which means you'll also be making money on your earnings. While this won't happen overnight, the sooner you start investing for your long-term goals, the more time your money will have to work for you. 
Okay, all of this sounds rosy and super easy, but as anything in life, there are plenty of pitfalls. Unfortunately, a lot of people approach the goal setting process with a lackadaisical attitude. Let's talk about some of the things you should avoid when saving for your $100,000 goal. Number one is not having a plan. When it comes to saving or investing any amount of money, it's crucial to have a plan in place. This means you need to know exactly how much money you're going to save, when you're going to save it, and how you're going to allocate the money. To get started with your savings plan, calculate how much you'll need to save each month to reach $100,000 in your select time frame. Number two is not actively monitoring your progress. In addition to having a plan, it's important to actively monitor your progress to ensure that you're on track and make changes as needed. The problem with a lot of people is that they don't pay attention to their progress, which can lead to mistakes. For example, if you calculated that you need to save $870 per month in order to reach your goal, but then find out you can only contribute $700 a month, the first step is to adjust your plan. Maybe that means saving for more years, or maybe that means increasing the amount that you contribute into your investments once you're able. Number three is getting impatient and cashing out early. Investing for the long term is always a good idea, but it can be difficult to stay invested in something that you won't see results for many years. Unfortunately, many people who may be in this predicament will cash out early and take money off the table. This is a mistake, as it can drastically hinder your progress and leave you far behind where you should have been. Remember this Charlie Munger quote, the first rule of compounding is to never interrupt it unnecessarily. Number four is not setting realistic expectations. Again, Warren Buffett has a great quote, nobody wants to get rich slowly. When setting financial goals, we all want to achieve them quickly. We hear stories of friends and family members who reach their goals in record time, making us think we can do the same. When setting your long-term goal, it's important to remember that the journey is going to take some time. Therefore, you should set a plan that is achievable and realistic rather than making your goal too aggressive and then being disappointed when you don't meet it. And number five is not saving enough from the very beginning. If you start out behind the ball, it can be hard to catch up. That's because compound interest is one of the most powerful tools in your financial toolbox, but it only works when you let your money grow. By starting out with small contributions and then increasing your savings as time goes on, you'll be able to take advantage of the power of compound interest. Your plan to save $100,000 is feasible if you take it seriously. You can do this. And even if you are starting late, so what? Are you going to give up? That's crazy. Your future self is out there 20 years from now. Do you want the future self to be wealthy or struggling and poor? Hopefully, if there is one thing you take away from this video, it's that $100,000 is a very real possibility for you, but it only happens with a plan. And the earlier you start saving and investing, the sooner you'll reach this goal. And by the way, if generating wealth is important to you, I strongly encourage you to watch my video on Morgan Housel. He does a deep dive into the underlying psychology of money. He has an amazingly original message. Watch that video now.